Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the gift of life and for the opportunity to meet once again. I trust that the Lord will speak to us in categories that will be of benefit. Shall we please bow our heads and pray? Thank you for this awesome opportunity to buy into your word. We know that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. And so Lord, speak to us and let us leave this place with a testimony in our hearts that indeed we have encountered you through the preaching of your word. We thank you for an answered prayer in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, my brother. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are reflecting on a theme, Peter's journey of faith. Peter's journey of faith. And for our scripture reading, I have selected Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. But because of time, I'm going to read only verse 26 to 29. Matthew chapter 14, Verse 26 to 29. Shall we please listen for the word of God? But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. This is the word of God. Brothers and sisters, the word faith is associated with words like trust, confidence, and persuasion. And Martin Luther says something profound about faith. He says that faith is a gift from God. And a living, bold trust in God's grace. So certain of God's favor that it will risk death a thousand times trusting in it. In simple terms, faith means active an absolute trust in the sovereignty of God. So any journey of faith ought to be a journey of active and absolute trust in the sovereignty of God. Now returning to our chosen scripture, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 begins with the story of the brutal murder of John the Baptist. And then it is followed by the feeding of the 5,000. And then Jesus and Peter walking on the water. And then the last bit of that chapter talks about Jesus healing people who came his way. In verses 22 and 23, 
We learn that Jesus made the disciples to cross to the other side of the sea. The Sea of Galilee. And Jesus remained alone. He remained to give himself the opportunity to commune with his father. Jesus stayed behind to pray. You see, corporate prayer is good. And corporate prayer helps. But we must not forget time alone with God. Because that will enable you develop a deeper relationship with God. And Jesus teaches us this as he stayed behind to pray. So Jesus stayed behind. And then in verse 24, we learn that as the disciples were on the sea, they were buffeted by strong winds and heavy waves. And it is Jesus who asked them to leave. They had journeyed according to the words of Jesus. And yet, they faced challenges. And I'm sure Jesus wanted to communicate to them that any time we are distant from him, challenges will come our way. Any time we separate ourselves from Jesus, we will be buffeted by the many challenges of life. So they face strong winds and heavy waves. Now distance from the Lord means ceasing to commune with him. Distance from the Lord means staying away from your Bible. Distance from the Lord means staying away from the fellowship of other believers. And attempting to solve life challenges by yourself. Remember what Jesus says to us. In John chapter 15 verse 5. He says that I am the vine. You are the branches. He who remains in me. And I in him. Bears much fruit. For apart from me. You can do nothing. So if we decide to take things into our own hands. And rely upon our own strength. We will not amount to anything. If we distance ourselves from the Lord Jesus Christ. Crisis will be for us. Now in verse 25. The disciples have gone through that experience already. And I'm sure they were hoping for a better tomorrow. Then at dawn. Around 3 a.m. They saw somebody walking on the sea. So from one experience of fear to another experience. We are told that they were terrified again. And some said, this must be a ghost. You see, fear has a way of blindfolding all of us. It is a, it is a way, it has a way of taking our sense of rationality and destroying our confidence in God. They became so afraid that they said the figure they are seeing must be a ghost. And in our journey with the Lord, sometimes we are taken over by fear. Sometimes we forget what the Lord has done for us in time past. And in the face of fresh challenges, we allow fear to dictate our choices and the way we even think. Let me share this personal story with you. Between 2009 and, 2000, uh, and 2012, I was serving at Calvary Methodist Church at Abraka. And I think 2010, we were about to leave for what we call FK, Fellowship of the Kingdom a meeting for all the Methodist ministers in Ghana. When I was getting ready to leave, I had a call from a friend of mine. And he said, Chase, well, I'm on pie, I'm on pie, I'm on and I said, what is wrong with you, my brother? So he told me that he had been sick for some time 
He's been to the hospital several times, and they were unable to figure out what was wrong with him. And I said, okay, we'll pray. I will pray for you and ask some other brothers to also pray for you. And then he said he was coming from Cape Coast to Accra. And I said, okay, then when you get to Accra, let me know so that I can meet you before I travel. So I didn't hear from my brother. Then another friend called me and said, your friend has been admitted at Kolebu. And I said, okay, then let me rush to Kolebu to go and see before I travel because I was waiting for his call. So I went to Kolebu to see this friend of mine. And then he told me about what was wrong with him and what the doctors had found out. So I left him. I traveled for the FK. I came back. And when I came back, I called my friend. He didn't pick up. I called the wife. The wife said, uh, your, your friend is at a prayer camp. I said, what? The state in which I met him, why would he be at the prayer camp? He said, the doctor said they've done all that they could. And what is left is in the hands of the Lord. So at that point, I knew it was a serious matter. So fast forward, my friend died. And then I decided to read about what caused the death of my friend. Because he had shared with me. I read and read and with the help of Google, I could read, read, read. I read to the point where I began to feel sick. And in fact, I was dying myself. So I decided to go to the hospital to get some uh, tests done. When the results came, exactly what I killed my friend was in my system. So I just said to myself, oh, I'm also going to die. We are talking about how fear can blindfold us, how fear can take over our being and remove our minds from God, destroy our confidence and our faith. I went to church. I looked at the congregation and I said to myself, oh, my congregation, you don't know I'm going to die. I said that to myself. I went to the office. I look at the office staff. I said, oh, you're not going to see me around very soon. Now, during that time, we had um, a program at Happy FM. It was dubbed Wesley R. And I had to go and preach uh, at Happy FM. And looking at the state of mind in which I was, I didn't even know what message I prepared. But I went. But as soon as I entered the studio, the DJ was playing a song by uh, Rebecca, South African uh, gospel artist. The song was, Look on me, O Lord, and answer my prayer. Restore my strength. Don't let me die. As soon as I heard the song, I regained my consciousness as a child of God. And then I told the brother that, please, can you give me this, your CD? So I was awful. I will give it to you. So after my preaching, I took the CD. And I played the CD the whole day. And then I remembered that my end should be the glory of the Lord. I am not destined to die young. And that what has killed my friend was not going to kill me. And that it was only fear that was playing on my system. So I began to pray and to make declarations over my own body. So I did that for some time. And I went back um, to Rage. I went to visit a senior colleague. And then I met a doctor there. And I told the doctor, please, I want to come and see you. So the doctor said, you can come. So I went to see him. I told him my story. He booked me for a series of tests. And then the doctor told me, oh, you are fine. There is nothing in your system. But you see, Give it to God. But before that, fear had dictated my thinking, my feeling, and my perception. So for the disciples, having experienced one kind of turbulent situation and seeing another one, 
You can imagine the state of instability in their system. They were taken over by fear. First John chapter 4 verse 18 reminds us that fear is a torment. So the near death experience of the disciples created a sense of insecurity in their minds, making them fearful and unstable. We cannot blame them because sometimes it is as if we have been programmed to face one problem after the other. But when we are buffeted, when we are challenged by the many problems of life, we should remember that there is a voice that says, do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Hallelujah. So in your day of terror, in your day of uncertainty, in your day of adversity, may you hear the voice of Jesus saying to you, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. In verses 28 and 29, we see Peter reacting in faith. After Jesus telling them not to be afraid, he says to him, if it is you, then ask me to join you on the water. And Jesus said, come. For me, that was Peter reacting in faith. And Jesus inviting him to experience faith. But you see, as I said before, even when Jesus asks you to come and you obey, it doesn't mean that you gain immunity from the winds and from the waves. So Jesus told Peter, come. And Peter started walking on the water. And then along the line, the winds blew, the waves came against him, and Peter took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the winds and the waves. And he began to sink. When his attention shifted from Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, to the winds, to the waves, we learn that he began to sink. And I'm sure that is condensed. If we lift our eyes off Jesus, if we take our attention from Jesus, who is the desmos of life, the one who holds all things together, and begin to focus on the things around us, we will also sink. So Peter began to sink. And then Peter shouted, Lord, save me. And the Lord saved him. Hallelujah. This invitation for Peter to journey in faith and experience faith has three lessons for us. Number one, God's call does not give us immunity from strong winds and heavy waves. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into various temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And so let us bear in mind that we are children of God. Jesus has invited us to journey with him in faith. But we have not been given immunity from challenges. But the assurance is that when those challenges come, we have an anchor. We have an anchor. We have an anchor in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The second lesson is learn to ignore the winds and waves and stay focused. On Jesus. Life is made up of many distractions. And if you don't take care, some conversations, some postings online, messages that you hear, and things that you see with your eyes will distract you. But take your eyes off the winds and the waves. It is true 
that things are difficult. It is true that many of us do not know where to turn to. But let us confess positively. Let us speak positive words. Let us stay positive. Let us focus on Jesus who is able to turn our situations around and not on the waves and the winds. Hallelujah. The last lesson is that call on the Lord when the winds and waves are sinking you. You see, there are many believers who lose their faith when they go through challenges. When life turns things in a negative way for them. When their expectations are not met. When it appears that they are lacking behind. They lose their faith. But when challenges come, when difficulties come our way, what we must learn to do is to call on the Lord. For anybody who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. Peter called on Jesus and said, Lord, save me. And the Lord saved him. And if you also call on Jesus, he will save you. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9 says, He will keep the feet of his holy ones, but the wicked will be put to silence in darkness, for no man will prevail by strength. So if you decide to do it by yourself without calling on the Lord, you will fail. It is not in all cases that experience will help you. I know many of you are very experienced in life. But there is a place for experience in life and there is a place for faith, absolute faith in Jesus. I do not pray that the winds and the waves confront you. But when they do come, do not forget that there is a master, there is a savior, there is an uncle who is right by your side. All you have to do is to call on him. Hallelujah. My dear Christian friend, I don't know where you are in your faith journey, but my encouragement to you this morning is that trust in your journey of faith. Even when the road seems rough, rough at times, you will get there. There is a hymn in the Asempa hymnary that I love so much. It says that courage brother, do not stumble. Though your path be dark as night, there is a star to guide the humble. Trust in God and do the right. And so I say to you, courage brother, courage sister, do not stumble. Though your path be dark as night, there is a star to guide your steps. All you have to do is to trust in God and do the right. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may your life be a testimony to others. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we please bow our heads and pray? I don't know what you heard. And I don't know what the Lord has said to you. I came to present what the Lord said I should present to you. Just speak to God about what you heard. And if you have to ask him for divine strength to stand when the winds are blowing, when the waves are coming against you, ask him. If you are already going through winds and waves, tell him that today you have learned from Peter and that you are calling upon him and that he should come through for you. Pray for yourself. Pray. 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 He's a prayer answering God. And what is difficult unto man is never difficult unto him. He's able to do far exceedingly abundantly above all that we can imagine or ask. This is the God that we serve. A God who changeth not. He's the same yesterday today and forever. Ask him to uphold you 
Tell him, Savior, uphold me lest I fall. If you know anybody who is facing some turbulence in his or her life, commend that person into the hands of the Lord. Pray for God's stability over the person's life. Pray for God's grace over the person's life. To be able to bear the pain. Sometimes until the Lord takes away the pain, we need grace to bear it. Speak to God. Shall we prepare to bring our prayer to a close? And so, Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you for what you've given us this day. We ask that this word will continue to dwell in our hearts and that we will walk in faith and not in fear. As I ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen.